All right, let's get to these highlights. New York Giants, Detroit Lions. Daniel Jones coming off four straight games with interceptions, 11 giveaways since starting in week three. A lot of loose chains left on the field. And speaking of loose chains, oh, man, you can't get your refund for this return right here. Devon Kennard. He takes that to that. What's up, Devon? It's like my little brother. Shout out to his little brother, Derek, who I played college ball with. All right, Matt Stafford. They say once you hear the roar, it's too late. Now, I want you to pay attention to this trick play. By the time the Giants defense realized it's a trick play, it is too late. Over the top to who? Galladay. Oh, man, the Lions. They were all over the Giants in this one. They win this game 31 to 26. Stafford's been awesome. Eagles, Bills, Peter, two alma maters. Go. Who are those guys? North Dakota State and Wyoming. Yeah! The Disney's powerhouse coming off getting hammered twice in a row. And they swung the sledge in this one. Look at Miles Sanders go. Is he going to get the pylon? He doesn't need to dive. He just coasts right in. Breakaway speed. Look at Miles' first career rushing touchdown. It was him and Saquon in college? crazy? The two of them, both 26. And then they just give it to Jordan Howard. Watch this tattoos on these Eagles. Yeah! Nope. Good stuff. Nope. I love it. Nope. And there's the sort of cool pose. It doesn't matter. You know what their pose was? It was the flexing a double bicep all over Western New York. The Eagles, with I think, with respect to the Niners, the most impressive win of this season, Ooh. or the, rather of the weekend. I, I'm getting a lot of control. 31-13. Yeah. <laughs> Eagles, it was good. It wasn't that good. But Malcolm Jenkins came under some fire from former teammate Orlando Skandrick this week. Strengths is going to get in that in a minute. But first, Mike G caught up with him and uh, wanted to get his thoughts on it. Go ahead. What we saw today was really fully a result of the guys in our locker room just, um, you know, having a determination, just coming together, having a great week of preparation, great week of practice. Uh, had a lot of energy in practice that also had a lot of energy today. We knew we were going to come on the road against a physical team. You know, in bad weather conditions is going to be one of those, you know, games that, that test you as a group. But we respond well, and I think this gives you we have great leadership, we have great coaches, um, and everybody just buying into what we're doing. The Eagles are fresh off two straight losses, and they respond in a big way on the road. Hostile territory, seemingly some turmoil in the locker room following comments Orlando Skandrick made after uh, his release this week. Did the Eagles, I know how you feel, Peter, mm -hmm. did they save their season yesterday? You know, on Saturdays, Kay, I like to touch base with a lot of people around the league. So I'll go into my phone, I'll call GMs, I'll call coaches, I'll call agents, I'll call some players. We'll try to collect as many notes as possible. Friday, Orlando Skandrick, after being released, did the media rounds with FS1 and had all these comments about the Eagles. And I, I thought, no big deal, right? The Eagles were pissed. Like, they were pissed. And they rallied around this one specifically. Okay. I'm going to compare him to Dak Prescott. I spent enough time with both of them. And Dak is a natural-born leader. He's the first one in the building. He's the last one out. He's doing extra things. Carson, if you go back to earlier in the season... Wasn't this a, they dropped a few passes and now they want to stay after practice and catch mm. that's adversity, right? How do you handle success when you handle success when you rip off a few games? That blah, was blah, on blah, and blah, on blah, and on. Blah 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 blah. They were they were upset. They were upset that they started questioning the preparation and the livelihood of their quarterback Carson Wentz. And this went from the top of the organization down. Skandrick, you could trash Howie Roseman. You could make your comments about sure. Malcolm Jenkins. Don't come at our quarterback. They rallied around it. And Carson Wentz was awesome yesterday. Do they just need me to rally around this team constantly? It feels like that's what they are. They need an underdog mask yeah. or they need, they need something. Nick Foles to have to fill in it. Whatever it is, Skandrick, whether intentional or not, a former teammate, seemed to light a fuse. And I, and I don't want to make a bigger deal than it is. It is a big deal there. They rallied around it. I'm telling you, it's fact. So let's send him some edible arrangements. He's the MVP. He should. All right. Get a little bit of chocolate. Go. I, I, I don't know everything, but I've learned a few things right now. Bad looks for you if you're in the media or on Twitter. Don't ever, don't ever think the Patriots have real problems. They're going to rot them from the side out. Don't ever give up on the Frank Wright Colts. And don't ever give up on the Doug Peterson Eagles. They find a way back. Guys, they were 3-4 and four headed into this game. They were 3-4 and four last year, went all the way to the playoffs. You know, earlier this year, they had a game at Lambeau, and they were 1-2 and two at the time. And we spent the whole week saying they have to save their season, save their season after they won that game. I got a text from someone with the Eagles organization was like, save the season? That's a little much. No, I think they saved their season. And you know what? Yesterday, I think they did again. Don't ever count them out. If they're 0-9, they will get to the playoffs. I'm telling you. <laughs> There's three Patriots, Colts, Eagles. Don't do it. You look that bad. That said, the margin for error in the NFC is minuscule. Guys, they're a half game back of the division. They're still two games back of the Vikings and the Seahawks for a wild card spot. Now, getting back to Skandrick. Don't count them out, okay? Let's just be real. Let's just be real. Good. Let's be real. <laughs>
<laughs> at the table, we don't know. We don't know if that's true, what he said. We don't know what's going on in the Eagles locker room. We can make our own assumptions, mm-hmm. but maybe everything that Orlando Skandrick was saying was spot on. Mm-hmm. But who cares, though? I agree with you guys 100%. Did they save their season? I don't know what's going to happen at the end of the year. I do know that they saved the flow of the energy that goes through that locker room, that goes through that organization. Right now, it's more about what they look at when uh-huh. they see each other every single day versus wins and losses. And I'm speaking from a player's perspective. There's a, a point in the season, usually around eight or nine games, uh-huh. where the outside noise either is muted or it gets louder and louder. And before you know it, you start chirping with guys on the team because you're hearing everybody else talk about how bad you are. And that's exactly what happened. Orlando came out. He said whatever he felt was on his heart. And then all of a sudden the team said, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. He don't rock with us. He ain't with us. He ain't on our yeah, team. No. We don't worry about like him. Uh-huh. And I think that right there rallied the troops. And, and let me say this, though. <laughs> with everything that Orlando Skandrick said, there's parts of it that we've said on this show. How many times have we said, do we, do we know if Carson Wentz got that dog? Do we know if he's a natural born leader? So I'm not mad at him saying that. Mm-hmm. What I do love more than the statement it's how the Eagles responded to it. That's the way you're supposed to. How do they sustain it? So they've got the Bears, then they get a bye, then they have the Seahawks and the Patriots. Like, it's not pretty, it's not easy, and the NFC is really tough. So do they... All they've got to do is Could they the make East. moves? They've got to win the East, mm-hmm. right? And the they Cowboys... They got 71 yards out of their wide receivers yesterday. It's not... I don't know that stat. It's 31-13, right? No, they got destroyed like, by Dallas. They ran. They, they ran 200-plus. I get it, but they just went into Buffalo, a team that... Everybody we, crowned. We crowned a little early. We got to talk about hey, the show, too. Smacked they them just up. got punched in the teeth. Why did that happen? Smacked them up. Bad. So I'm bad. not saying the Eagles are going to run off 15 straight games. Okay, of course not. I'll say that that division is very winnable. Of all the divisions in the league, mm. I think the NFC East might be the most winnable. Mm. Love that. Deshaun Watson was a magician yeah, yet again really yesterday, working his way well into the MVP conversation, but... Bad news for the Texans. We have an injury update on J.J. Watt on the way, and we'll hear from Drew Brees on his early return to the field. We'll break down the Saints. All the highlights this morning.